Hi team, today I'm at Fort San Pedro in the Philippines and I'm going to give you 10 handy tips that you can follow to help you travel for longer with less money. If you're new to the departure brief, my name is Matt and I've been traveling the world now for over five months trying to spend less than 50 Australian dollars a day. And for me, these 10 tips are essential knowledge that I think you should know before going on your own long-term trip. Have a semi-structured itinerary. When you're traveling long-term, you're gonna meet so many people that give you so many great recommendations. Not only that, you're gonna feel a lot of feelings. You're gonna feel the need to be still. You're gonna feel the need to move on from a place. You're gonna have urges to connect with nature and you're gonna have urges to pamper yourself with a bit of luxury. Having a fully booked itinerary is the kryptonite to long-term travel and it's gonna seriously hamstring your ability to action all those feelings. So what should you do? For me, the best thing to do is have a list of must-see items on your trip and then leave the rest open only book a couple days in advance and see where you end up. That is the best way to travel long term. Avoid traveling in peak and absolute low season. The shoulder season is the time between peak and low and that is the best time to travel in destinations from my experience. And you can trust my experience on that because I've traveled in the absolute peak peak seasons of the European summers and I've traveled in the absolute low in Southeast Asia. And in the lowest of low seasons, it's not uncommon for you to find yourself in a prime location in the biggest party hostel only to be completely alone. It's happened to be multiple times on this trip where I've been in a hostel and not seen anyone for days. So to avoid that, travel in shoulder season, you'll have more authentic experiences, less stress, lower prices, but still enough authentic experiences with the locals and a smaller amount of other travelers. Considering we're in a fort, this one is perfect because it is about safety. It is super important to keep up with your government's travel safety website. For Australians, that is smarttraveler.com. If you're heading somewhere, it's always a good idea to check the current level of safety. If it's classed as a do not travel, you can still travel there, but understand that your travel insurance is likely going to be void. So do your research before going somewhere like that. Budgeting. Understanding how to actually budget for your intended trip will have a massive impact on the enjoyment and the hip pocket. The simplest way to work out how much a trip is gonna cost you is to work out your daily expenses using budget travel vlogs specific to the countries that you'll be visiting. Find out the estimated cost per day pertaining to your travel style and multiply that by how many days you plan to be traveling for and then add on to that figure the estimated cost of long haul flights, ferries and bus rides, visas and don't forget travel insurance and also your big ticket items like if you're planning to trek in Nepal or go to Disneyland, things that are one-off costs that are really big that will be outside of your day-to-day -day budget. Speaking of budgeting, track your expenses. I can't stress this enough. This will help you stay true to your budget and ensure that you aren't wasting money lowering your budget in the early part of your trip, this is how you do it. I've made a very simple Excel spreadsheet that I use to track my daily expenses. It only takes me two minutes a day to update. I can see exactly what I've spent my money on in the past and what I've got coming up. I love it, it's helped me stay on track and I've been using it for well over 100 days now. If my travel spreadsheet is of interest to you, make sure you comment below travel spreadsheet and subscribe to the channel. If enough people do, I'll make a separate video showing exactly what my spreadsheet is, how I use it, and how you can get a copy for yourself. Do not eat your travel budget. For me, so often my biggest expense is food and beverages. Take it from me, it is so easy to blow your budget, eating every delicious thing you see on the streets, especially in Southeast Asia where the food is so incredibly delicious and appears so cheap. But if you buy one of everything, you're gonna spend most of your money for the day. The key is to remain disciplined. Utilize free breakfasts at your accommodation, eat at local markets, and if you have a luxurious dinner, lunch, or breakfast, make sure you supplement that cost with instant noodles from 7-Eleven. And drinking alcohol speaks for itself. The more you drink, the more you spend. Walk, walk, and walk some more. Since you're traveling long-term, you're not on a tight schedule. You do not have to be packing in as much as you can into every single day, which eliminates the need to travel quickly from destination to destination. So avoid using grabs and taxis and buses as much as you can and walk. My rule of thumb is if Google Maps says it's gonna take me less than an hour to walk somewhere, I do it as often as possible. That way I get to see much more of the city and I spend less money. This one is so important for making a trip more enjoyable and keeping your budget in line. Go slow. The faster you travel between destinations, the quicker you chew through your travel budget because you have to spend more money on trains, buses, flights, visas, currency exchange, 
go slow. Stay in places longer, you'll have a much more authentic and enjoyable time and you'll spend way less money. The most important metric you need to track when traveling long term is your cost per day. Here's an example of why. If you're traveling to Laos for five days and then to Cambodia for five days, and for argument's sake, a visa for each country will cost you $50, that's $100 purely in visas. Essentially making it $100 of visas for 10 days of travel. So $10 a day of your daily budget goes to visas. Now let's say you change your itinerary. You're traveling in Laos for 15 days and Cambodia for 15 days. Now you're spending $100 on visas for 30 days of travel, making it only $3.33 of your daily budget. You can see with this example how it is so important to go slow and to manage your cost per day. This one's important for enhancing your experience while on your trip. Get off the beaten path. It is so easy to just watch a YouTube video or read a blog post about what are the best attractions and best places to be in a certain destination. I do it, we all do it. More often than not it's correct but if you want to have an experience that is totally your own authentic, local, connected. Go down a funky alley, get lost in a city, take a bus to a different part of town that you've never been before. That is essential and because you have time as a long-term traveler, you can do it and still do all the must-see activities. Take it from me, some of the best experiences I've had on this trip have been doing exactly that. Getting lost in a city, going somewhere completely random and just engaging with locals and having a great time. Stay connected. This one is absolutely important if you're a solo traveler as well as a long-term traveler. Take it from me, I've been traveling for over five months now by myself pretty much for the entire time as a solo traveler. Now, while I have been putting myself out there being a social butterfly on occasions, I'm also what you would describe as someone who is on the fence between being an extrovert and an introvert. So there has been periods where I've just shut myself into my bubble for days, even weeks at a time, and during those moments of solitude, it is so important to set time aside with your loved ones back. They're watching your life through a smartphone as you are theirs. So don't just share about your travel. Make sure you stay up to date with what's going on in their lives. This will help you stay grounded and avoid severe homesickness and also let you recharge your social batteries for the next time you want to be a social butterfly. So there you have it folks. They're my 10 tips that I wanted to share with you about how to travel longer, better and cheaper. If you have some of your own, please feel free to share them in the comments. Till next time, have a great day. This is one way to keep the neighbors in check.